So I just finished painting this black ZL1 stripe here on my 69 Corvette. And uh, definitely makes the car look a little more aggressive. So this will be a quick little video. I'll show you step by step how I laid it out and uh, how I got it to look very close, or at least in my opinion, it looks just like the original. So if you're kind of a crazy person like me and you want to try and do this on your car, um, I'll kind of show you what I did here. And uh, so we'll go back in time here and start at step one. Okay, so uh, it's been about 24 hours since I sprayed the clear coat. So now, now that it's cured, at least to the touch, um, I can go ahead and start putting masking tape on here without the fear of the masking tape pulling the clear coat off. Uh, so I'm going to start masking this off and creating the ZL1 stripe here. So this could be a little, little difficult, but I think I can get it figured out. So that's what we're going to do there. And I've got three different pictures here that capture pretty much everything I think that we need. So as far as trying to get the dimensions off of this thing. So I'm going to basically build this from the outside in uh, using masking tape. So, all right, so step one, I'm going to figure out where the depth is from the edge uh, of the body here up to these first little pinstripe line. So let's get started on that first. Okay, so this is step one here. Basically, we got the height that we need for the bottom part of this, for this stripe. So basically what I did, this is three quarter inch masking tape. So the three quarter inch, you're gonna go from your very bottom edge here all the way across. And you're gonna use that as your guide uh, to put your fine line tape on because the front end of this car is not square or straight, you know, so you can't just pull a straight line across here with your fine line tape. You gotta, it kind of curves with the front end of the car. So to get that, we needed some sort of a guide. So we're using this three quarter inch masking tape as our guide and it puts the fine line tape right where we need it. It's the exact thickness we need. So this green line here, that's where the, that's where the black pinstripe will actually be. And if you can see, we have to the bottom of the headlight here, we have about the thickness of the, of the fine line itself, which is exactly what we want. So if you look at the original car, you can see the headlight has just a, just a hair of yellow hanging out right below that pinstripe, which is about the thickness of the stripe itself. So what I'm using, uh, as far as the pinstriping goes, this is just uh, like a cheap fine line masking tape type material. This is gonna be removed because this is actually where the, where the black paint is gonna be. But whenever I create my actual fine line, I'm gonna use this vinyl tape and this is quarter inch. So this will create a nice sharp edge. So basically I'll remove this three quarter inch masking tape and I will put the fine line against the green and then I'll be able to remove the green because that's where the, the black paint will go. But we will put another piece above the green and that will then create the space where we will paint the black. So that's the first step and in the center here we just had to create like a little bit of a curve right down the right down the center line <clears throat> okay so that's step one all right okay moving on next part okay so step two in this <clears throat> is creating this radius here that we need and what i figured is if you take a piece and you run it right along the very edge of the fender here and then run another piece right next to it. That's where the black line is going to be, which will continue its way down here. 
because we want that little bit of yellow space between the black line and the edge of the fender all the way up. So this will be, this is our black line that's going to come up. And as far as figuring out where to put the bend, if you run a line, uh, which is this piece here, straight from the corner here, um, and you run that up to the very edge of the light right there, that's going to be the center of your radius point, or at least approximately. And it kind of gives you at least some guideline uh, for where to start putting it. Um, because if you look at this guy here, if you go from right here at this corner straight up to this edge, you can see it intersects the center of both of these corners on this stripe. So that's about the best I can do as far as figuring out where it needs to go. So good enough for me. And uh, so what I did <clears throat> was I used, so this roll is four and a quarter in diameter. So basically I just stuck that on there like that. And then I just followed the tape around it. That way I can create the same radius on both sides of the car and that way they match. Okay. And uh, let's see, figure out what step three is going to be. I don't even know yet. Okay, so now that I've got this corner here done, what I can do is I can create one big long line, which is going to go from up here. I'm going to use the actual fine line tape, the vinyl stuff. I'm going to start from this edge here. I'm going to just leave it hang long. And it's going to run right along the very edge. So basically it's going to be in place of where this green line is here. It's going to come down and it's going to wrap directly underneath of this green line here with the curve. So the green line with the right here with the curve, this represents where our black pinstripe will be. So I want to run the vinyl tape down underneath of it all the way around and the same thing all the way back up to the other side. So all one long piece with no seams. And then I'll do the same thing on the inside of this green line up here. But I have to finish running this green, this green line that represents where the paint will be. I need to finish running it all the way up. And then I'll do, you know, another vinyl line on the inside of it here. And then that will create the, the point where we will lay the paint in for that, for that black stripe or the black pinstripe, whatever you want to call it. So that's where we're at now. All right. Okay, so a little tip here. I realize it's a little more difficult to follow the curvature of this fender. Uh, it's a little more difficult than I anticipated because of the, the way the light reflects as you try to put it on. So what I did was I just used this three quarter masking tape along the outside edge. It's easier because it, when you're trying to put the tape along the inside edge, you're, you're dealing with a shadow, and so it's actually hard to see the edge. And this wider tape, you know, it's, it stays a little straighter, so it's easier to get a straighter line. <clears throat> so I put that on first, and I'm going to use that as a guide. And then I'll just run uh, the fine line tape right along that edge. And, uh, yeah, also, you can... You can kind of stand back and look at it before you waste all your fine line tape and uh, make any adjustments. So looks pretty good. So we'll go with that. I've got the masking tape on both sides and I've removed the green line tape that was down here. So basically I'm just going to take the blue fine line tape from here and I run it all the way down on the inside of this masking tape down through here around the bottom and then the same thing all the way around up along this side all the way down okay here we go okay so we got the blue line run and i put the blue line on the inside as well and that runs all the way down around 
So it might be a little hard to visualize at this point, but the green will be where the, where the paint is. And then we'll do another blue, green, blue up here, which will run the other side of that stripe. And then we'll basically, we'll be masking from this blue line down and from the outer blue line on this side out and we'll take the green line out. So when we spray, the black will fill in where the green line is. It'll fill in between this blue line and the other blue line, which will create the wide strip. And then we'll have our other pinstripe on the other side. So now I'm just gonna make two or three more lines like this on the inside and then make them merge up in here. Oh yeah, easier said than done. But we're getting there, about halfway done. So the next part now, I gotta figure out the thickness that this stripe is going to be, which shouldn't be too difficult because it looks as though it just splits right down through the center of the badge there. If you look at this photo here. So looks like the the upper pinstripe goes right through the dead center of that of that badge. And it looks as though it's the same thickness, you know, from here all the way down. And it doesn't get thinner or taper until it starts to go up around the fender there. So that shouldn't be too bad to do. So the thickness here for the black stripe across the front I decided to just go ahead and stack the masking tape up. And that way the masking tape is following the contour of the fine line tape down here, which is also uh, following the contour of the front of the car. So uh, this actually worked out perfectly. So it'll give me, it'll give me a, you know, something to follow along as a guide whenever I put the fine line tape up here. And it, it worked out absolutely perfectly that just the three the three strips of this masking tape, uh, you can see right here is the two holes for the uh, for the logo. So uh, one strip of green, just as a spacer. And then this next one that I put on will actually be where the black line is, or you know, the black fine line uh, above the stripe, which will perfectly go right, right in the center. I mean, it, it worked out absolutely perfectly. And the thickness of this tape, if you if you wanna buy the same width to make this work, if you're gonna do this. Let's see here. Do to do is, see it's just shy of an inch and a half. So three strips of that and then two strips of this green tape and that'll put me dead center right where I need to be so I couldn't be happier with that that'll be perfect okay so this part's getting a little crazy here this radius for this next piece that's coming up here uh you know to create this this strip here so I tried a few things it didn't really work because I didn't really get the the radius the way I wanted it. So basically what I did was, uh, this is four inch. So I started originally, uh, I think I mentioned four and a quarter because I was using that roll of tape. I actually used a different roll of tape that was four inches. So to create this as a way to follow this bend here, this is just a couple pieces of tape I put on some cardboard and then I put the roll of tape on there and traced it around it. So it's four inches in diameter. And uh, pretty much just got to stick that thing on there, you know, and then just bend this tape around it until you get, you know, a curvature that looks, you know, uh, kind of like what you wanted. And, and again, like I mentioned before, so the center of this bend should be right in line with uh, this piece of tape we put in earlier. So right in about here, and you just got to kind of play around with it. And if you're curious, I can, let's see, let me get a tape measure here. 
So just to give you a reference point, the thickness here, well, let's go down about there. So you can see it's just over, well, let's see, there we go. Just over two and a half inches, about two and five eighths, give or take. So, and then for the other side, what I did was I just made another one of these, flipped it upside down and marked where this line was. And then I also marked the edge of this headlight. So that way when I flipped it over, I stuck it back down on this side. So I, I that's the marker line there. You can see that it's lined up with the, the headlight gap. And then two little marks here that I made course it's on the other side so that's why you can't see it very well because I had it upside down so I was I was copying it on the on the sticky side because it's upside down so because it's obviously the opposite side of the car and uh, so now I'll follow this side here and that way it'll match both sides okay so what I'm doing uh, to try and get these both the same on both sides is uh, you can see I've got this little triangle piece here and I'm just matching that up, you know, on, you know, so I, I, I know I'm at least in the ballpark there. They're pretty damn close. And uh, the space between here and here, I'm using a piece of masking tape like this. So I just take this piece off, stick it over there and it's exactly the same. So then I know I have the same width uh, without trying to use a tape measure. And uh, just gotta play around with it. It's definitely tricky, but so far I think I've got about four hours in this. And you know, some of that is I had to go in the house, let the dogs out, but uh, mainly it's because I'm trying to figure this out as I go. So, so I've definitely never done this before. <clears throat> so just trying to find a way to create all this stuff. So, yeah, about four hours in it now. So keep on plugging away. Okay, this is proving to be a little more difficult than I thought right here. Trying to get the curvature of this line here. Okay, so it's starting to look like something now, finally. So we got the, the two upper fine line tapes on there and uh yeah this over here man this was a real bear trying to figure this out <clears throat> so i got this all figured out now finally so i figured out a way that i can duplicate it onto the other side so i still gotta get this one done so i've got a plan for that what i'll do is i will basically do some measurements along this and I'll show you what the width is as it goes up. And that way you could just put a few uh, pieces of tape, little markers along the edge and kind of use that as a guide. it will be a lot quicker that way. Um, I watched a bunch of YouTube videos actually showing the original ZL1 just from all different angles trying to get this just right. And uh, cause there's quite an illusion that goes on. So basically if you look at it this way, it almost kind of looks like it it bows out on the ends and kind of comes up to a point but as you go this way it looks as though it like curves real hard to one side so it just you know it changes as you as you go around so depending on the picture that you get of the ZL1 it, it's really difficult to tell what's going on with that stripe and so it took a while to get it just right and uh, over here, so it, where the black, the black inner part ends right at the beginning of the S for the Stingray logo. So I've got that right on. And then the end of the stripes, which ends right here, should be about two inches from the end of where the kind of, the flare kind of blends back into the fender. So it took a while to get this right. So yeah, I will, I will make some measurements of all that. And that way, if you, 
decide you're going to try and do this. this is... Okay, so before I start building this side over here, I needed to make some sort of a guide based off of this side so I can duplicate it. So, uh, first of all, this space right here has to be, let's see, I did a little math over here. Uh, it has to be right here, X, let's see, 62% of the, the front piece here. So this needs to be 62% of, of this, you know, cross section or whatever here. This right here is 109 on mine. It's 109 millimeters. So 62% of that is 67.8 millimeters. So, so right there is 68 millimeters from inside to inside. Now ignore this. I'll show you what that's about later. So this is exactly um, 68 millimeters. So it is 62% of this. And that way you get, it has the correct look to it. Okay, so as far as this goes, what I have here is starting from this inside corner right here, not this end, but over here on this masking tape measured up seven inches from the outside edge to the inside of this blue line, basically where the masking tape is, would be 86.3 millimeters then up to 13 inches. And of course I measured right where the little red line is. So from here, so outside edge to the inside of the blue is 85.9. And then I just worked my way up. And this way, if you wanna try to duplicate the exact shape, cause it took forever to get the exact shape that I needed. And then it just kind of terminates out into a, into a point there. So if you go with that measurement off of those, you know, then you can kind of just pull a straight line and just kind of lay it along that to kind of get that curve. At least that'll get you in the ballpark. Then you just got to fiddle with it to get it, you know, get the right, you know, to get it nice and smooth looking. So now I'm just going to duplicate that on this side and uh, hopefully it'll look all right and maybe get this thing painted tomorrow because I, I was planning on painting this today, but man, this took, this took a long, way longer than I thought it would. So, but we're getting there. Okay, so now what I've done is this little scale that I made, you can see I actually made it in two pieces. So what I did was I just peeled it off, brought it over here and I flipped it upside down and I'm just taping it back on. Obviously the sticky side is up now. So I'm just using a little tape to keep it down in place. And then I'll use that as a guide then for this side. And to check my work, I can see here, I got it started at the same place. And when I tape this one down, you can see this green line I ran just as a temporary line, just to see if it all lines up. It comes right around this. This green piece has been on here for a while. And so it came right up and it runs right along the edge of this, just like it did on the other side. So everything is absolutely spot on. This is kind of a crazy method, but it's actually working. So, and I don't, re I don't really know what the hell I'm doing. I'm just making this crap up. So, you know, if anybody has any ideas on how to make this quicker and easier, you know, leave a post because it might help somebody else out that's doing this. But whatever, it's working for me, so carry on. Okay, so I've got this thing run all the way up. So I've got a nice little guide there. And uh, before I do this, I just wanted to check and make sure that I had 68 millimeters there, which is the same. Is our starting point over on this side 
So now I know that everything is pretty much good to go. You know, from down in this point, I can pull that up and they should be identical side to side. Or at least here's hoping anyway. Okay, so I went ahead and just finished running these these lines here along with my the guide that I made. So now I've got it all done. And uh, these uh, corners over here, you, I just brought them all together exactly as, as, as they come down. Then you just find the two that overlap and I just used a straight edge along here. So lay a straight edge there and just cut it with a razor blade until it meets in the center and then peel it up. And so that's, that's pretty simple. And uh, overall, it looks pretty cool. I mean, even just the even just the blue line's pretty cool. So I definitely underestimated that. That probably took about six hours. I thought I was gonna slap that thing on there and and get this thing painted today, but that didn't happen. So, but it looks it looks pretty good. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, you know, I I spent a lot more time with trying to get the design uh, correct. I spent more time with that probably than, than anything else, uh, just trying to get it right. So that way it actually looks exactly as it's supposed to. And, uh, you know, it doesn't just look like something somebody threw together real quick. So anyway, it's about as good as it's gonna get for a, a dirty garage paint job. So I'm happy with it so far, at least at this point, so. Anyway, we'll see, we'll see how it looks tomorrow once I get it all painted. All right, so just starting to put the masking tape down now. Um, but I just wanted to point out something that I think might, might help out. So what I did was I put this masking tape here underneath of the blue first. That way, if any overspray gets underneath of the seam here, it, the, you know, the black paint's not going to stick to the inside of the yellow under here. So I put that white masking tape in there first. You know, like here's a good example. You know, the, the black paint's going to get right underneath of that. So I just put some masking tape in all those spots where the paint, I think, might get underneath. And uh, I also went through and made sure that the blue pinstripe tape or fine line tape uh, was nice and tight all along all the edges and that there was no air bubbles, no little pieces of hair sticking out. Uh, so you don't want that in there. Otherwise the paint will kind of bleed underneath the tape in those little spots. So yeah, and I'm going to start finish taping it off. So I'm putting this tape down first to do all the edging and then I'll come through and I'll tape some paper on here. I just use like this, these big rolls of these contractor type paper, same stuff that's in here. And I'll tape it from here out, cover the whole thing. Should be ready to go. Okay, looks pretty neat with a blue on there. <laughs> Got the car all masked off here. Pretty basic, nothing fancy. It's pretty much ready to go. Garage has all the plastic hung everywhere. Kind of looks like Dexter's kill room, but uh, it's pretty much ready to go. So the paint that I'm using is nascent and uh, it's just a standard black. Okay, so there's the, uh, the black paint. And it came out looking pretty darn good. Even, even the uh, end pieces here came out really sharp. So pretty happy with that. Definitely makes this car more aggressive. After two and a half years of working on this car, the paint will finally be done. So that's pretty cool. Well, got the clear coat on her, and it is looking really nice. Okay, so it's been about 24 hours uh, since I got the clear coat done. 
So it's dry to the touch now, so I was able to get all the plastic and masking tape off of it. Looks pretty darn good. Um, it's three coats of clear on top of that, so it still needs to be wet sanded. And I'm going to wait until spring to do that. Just kind of let it sit over the winter and uh, get the rest of it assembled. So it's definitely worth the eight hours or so it took to tape that thing off because it definitely looks pretty cool. It's kind of a hard angle to get because I'm kind of back up, backed up against my garage door here. But as soon as I get all the plastic off the door and then the garage here, I'll get the door open, put the hood on it, and get some better video of it. So, But I think it came out pretty good. What do you think?